This section's awfully stubby. Info from a stitch in time needs to be added. River arrived in 1938 New York City via her vortex manipulator. TV, the Angels take Manhattan, and set up the Angel Detective Agency together with her former student Luke Suleiman, investigating the Weeping Angels invasion of New York. During this time she went by the alias, Melody Malone. The two were hired by Marty Stone, a musician, who claimed to have seen his own death. River went with him to Coney Island, where she found out the Angels had taken over one of the carnivals, turning it into a food resource. They had also the help of the director of a local freak show, actually an alien, Miss Quirk, which had been promised by the Angels to being taken home. River could not save Marty, but together with Luke and Dean Cray, one of the freaks, foiled the Angel scheme. She then sent Luke home with Dean, while she remained to face the Angels. Audio, Carnival of Angels, a month later, a man named Rock Railton hired her to investigate what he feared to be a murder plot against him involving, the kiss of an angel. The following day, while attending a Starlight Studios party, she encountered an old man claiming to be Rock Railton, but believed him to be a bum. When she encountered the man she recognized as Rock, he had no memory of their meeting in her office the previous day. After dealing with two thugs that were hired to kill her, River returned to her office only to receive a call from head of Starlight Studios, Max Kleiner. She agreed to meet him at his studio the next afternoon, where she was reintroduced to Rock, who claimed to remember their prior meeting. However, River knew he was lying when she asked about giving him coffee and he pretended to remember this although it never happened. She also noted that Giddy Semestra, Rock's co-star, also did not remember meeting her the day before at the party. Max then led River down a block from the main studio and revealed to her a room full of giant bell jars filled with what appeared to be clones of Rock Railton, Giddy Semestra, and of Max's bodyguard, Hank Sissy. Max explained that they were not clones so much as everyday people who had had their flesh redistributed in their bodies to make them look identical to their template bodies. To do this, he had used the kiss of an angel. The duplicates did not live very long, however and were in fact growing old and dying out faster and faster because the weeping angel he was using to create his duplicates was growing stronger and therefore absorbing more and more of the victim's energy. Max planned to transform River into a copy of Giddy Semestra, but River kissed him using her hallucinogenic lipstick and managed to escape by killing the Hank copies and pushing Max into the arms of his weeping angel, who kissed him and turned him to dust. As River was reversing the process to turn the other transformed victims back into themselves and escort them to safety, she was unaware that the weeping angel was being stolen from behind the curtain it was sitting behind via an escape hole that had been cut into the wall. She returned in time to see a van speeding off, presumably with the angel inside. Pros. The Angel's Kiss. A Melody Malone Mystery. When Rory was sent back in time to 1938 New York City by one of the angels, he met River. Amy and the doctor had difficulty following him since all the time energy the angels had consumed made time travel difficult. With the help of a Chinese vase as landing lights, they managed to get through but found River trapped in the grip of one of the angels. She had to break her wrist in order to escape and the doctor used up some of his regeneration energy to fix it. Rory was locked in a cellar with a group of baby weeping angels but instead of sending him back in time, they just sent him to Winter Key. When River, Amy and the doctor found Rory, they also found an older version of him, dying in a bed. After that they heard loud thumps, made by the Statue of Liberty, which had become a weeping angel. With the angels closing in, River, her husband and her parents were forced to flee towards the roof and got separated on the way up. The Statue of Liberty was waiting for them and Rory and Amy decided to sacrifice themselves and create a paradox which would poison the angel's food source and kill them. River and the doctor watched in horror as Amy and Rory threw themselves off the roof, and the paradox killed all the angels except one, which somehow managed to survive. The group found themselves in a graveyard that had a gravestone with Rory's name on it. As they were preparing to leave, the surviving weeping angel ambushed them and sent Rory back in time. Because of the paradox, and all the poison time energy, the doctor couldn't take the TARDIS back to find him. 
Amy decided to allow the angel to touch her so that she could be with Rory. After a tearful goodbye to River and the doctor, Amy turned away from the angel and allowed it to touch her so that she could live with Rory for the rest of her life. The devastated doctor asked River to travel with him. River said she would go with him anywhere, but not all the time, as there was only room for one psychopath on the TARDIS. Under the name, Melody Malone, River went upstairs to write the book that led the doctor to 1930s New York and said that she would get Amy to write the afterword when she sent it to her for publishing, in hopes that the doctor would listen to Amy. TV. The Angels Take Manhattan. The doctor decided to take River to Darillium, knowing there would be their final meeting. Along the way they encountered his younger self who was currently taking River on her first night out from imprisonment. H-O-M-E-V-I-D. Last night, the doctor ultimately changed his mind and came up with an excuse not to go to Darillium, as he had many times before. TV, The Husbands of River Song. River helped her parents set up their new lives in New York by giving them the revenue from Melody Malone, which had proved surprisingly successful. As a result of the first book's success River wrote a prequel book, The Angel's Kiss, and likewise gifted the profits to her parents. Prose, The Ruby's Curse.